Ladies and gentlemen, the Minnesota Timberwolves. Take pleasure at this time in presenting you performing feats of unimaginable aerial skill. Filthy. Absolutely filthy. Anthony. Anthony. Anthony Edwards. Otherwise known as Ant Man. <laughs> Shit. Coming into the NBA draft, Anthony Edwards had garnered a reputation for being an electric scorer who reminded us of the great ISO scores of the 80s and the 90s. It's been bumpy at times, but through 57 games, he's found ways to live up to that reputation, going for 20 or more points in 25 of their outings. He's averaging 18 points per game on 49.9 true shooting, 2.7 assists, 4.4 rebounds, and 1.1 steals. The allure of Ant's game is not difficult to see. At 6'4 and 225 pounds, Edwards is an incendiary piece of iron. He's got a 6'10 wingspan and an 8'4 standing reach, and according to the fine folks over at P3 Sports Science, Ant ranked in the 98th percentile for explosiveness at his position. Not only does he get way up, he's got a 41.5 inch vertical, he gets way up quickly. In a way, Edwards almost reminds me of someone like Deion Sanders. Outrageously and hilariously confident, but when they preach the gospel of their ability, you don't really roll your eyes. Deep down, you're thinking, well, he's probably right. That self-assuredness makes Anthony completely fearless. Unfazed no matter the moment, the stage, or the opponent, his rack attack ambition off of one or two feet has already given us some of the most incredible visuals of the season. It's become a common talking point, but it should be noted that Edwards comes from a football background, and I think that you can see some of that powerful gap-splitting instinct on many of his drives. He combines elite start-stop ability with remarkable lower body elasticity and power. He can get careless and high with his dribble and traffic, especially with trailing defenders, but Ant's handle and wiggle with the ball in his hands frequently put him in the position to create separation. If that weren't enough, Ant is also built like a truck. He's a reasonably crafty and efficient finisher for a rookie, sometimes getting a little shaky when he's going from the right to the left side of the rim against pressure, but Edwards is already finishing through people in the NBA. If he continues to grow, this is a player who could easily get into the range of six to eight free throw attempts per game. While the Ant-Man has the ability to score in a wide variety of ways, much of his offensive game is driven by his infatuation with the pull-up jumper. And this has been an ongoing theme for him. This guy loves pull-ups more than potty training parents. Ant shoots it well on catch and shoot looks when he's open to the tune of 43.5%, but he seems to really relish the opportunity to rise up over the person guarding him and hit a tough shot. Now, a lot of these pull-up attempts have come from three. Now, if he were a lights out shooter, this wouldn't be much of an issue, but Anthony's jump shooting numbers are somewhat alarming. In 2021, there have been 27 players who have attempted 400 or more jump shots. Among those players, Edwards has the lowest field goal percentage and by a considerable amount. But hey, let's chalk this up to youth, right? Ugh. In the three-point era, 49 rookies have averaged over 15 field goal attempts per game. Through 54 games, only Jim Jackson had a lower field goal percentage than Edwards. Now, I think a good amount of this has to do with selection. He is a streaky scorer who can really erupt, and when he erupts, there is very little that you can do to stop him. The problem is that Ant seems to think that he's always on the verge of erupting, and this can create irresistible temptation to hunt his pull-up jumper and prevent fluid offense from flowing through him. I always feel like once I hit one shot, like, the rim gets big, so I just start taking them as much as I can. <laughs> There are some mechanical questions too, although it's not hopeless or appallingly bad. He looks the part of a mobile shooter, but when you take a closer look, he does seem to have a lot of elbow and arm in his release at the end of substantial elevation, which I theorize is causing him to shoot a hard ball. When you take a look at some of the best pull-up shooters in basketball from three and in the mid-range, guys of comparable size like Bradley Beal, CJ McCollum, one thing that jumps out is that Ant's shot seems to consistently be in the air for a shorter amount of time. The big takeaway from this unsightly aspect of Ant's game revolves around the word, how. How worried should we be? And when a shot chart looks like this, looking forward, you're forced to wonder, can he wipe out that much red? 
instincts and shot selection can be tweaked and massaged and mechanically like we said he's not a lost cause i think that it's going to be important for him to simply cut back on early clock or heavily contested threes that are self-created and find ways to reallocate some of those attempts he's got to continue to embrace and pursue a more dynamic approach to his own usage cutting is a great way to do that having a big guy like towns helps in this respect Cat's big time scoring ability draws the second most hard double teams in the NBA. So the opportunities to sneak into soft spots of the coverage are consistently going to be there. This was an aspect of the thinking that compelled Minnesota to get divorced and married on the same day in their hiring of Chris Finch. Finch is known for enabling offensive centers to create and play make away from the basket. And we've already seen some signs that Towns and Edwards are developing chemistry in this sense. Beyond that, I think that Edwards could look to emulate one of his heroes, Dwayne Wade. Ant has said in the past that he patterns his game after Wade, but I'd especially love to see him mimic Wade's clever on to off ball cutting game giving it up so that he can get it back. Watch the way Wade goes on and off ball numerous times here within a single possession, keeping his teammates in rhythm and allowing them to attack, and then at the last second he uses his quickness to get position on Fabricio Alberto for an easy one. A major frontier for growth within Anthony's game will be improving his ability to survey and instinctively react to the bigger picture in any given situation. It might be a result of that football background, but he has a tendency to process the game in short spurts of focus with a narrow view of the action. Although he does need to improve his efficiencies and decision making, in an ideal world, you could put a three level scoring threat like Edwards in the position to initiate the offense several times a game. As a passer, that is gonna require Ant to become more conscious of the full scope of the action unfolding around him. To contextualize this a bit further, not long ago I made up something called the pick and roll pyramid to describe the differences between players as initiators in this sense. Level one, whether it be from three, in the mid-range, or at the rim, a ball handler can use a screen to score. Level two, a ball handler has the ability to consistently score or assist their screening partner to score. Level three, a ball handler is a consistent scoring threat that can effectively play the two-man game and they can manipulate it and exploit the extra help that will come as a result. These are players who can have entire offenses built around them. It's very rare and maybe impossible that a player becomes one of these players later in life. I think that developing that problem solving skill set takes a lot of reps, starting from an early age. I say that to make the point that Anthony is probably a soft level two. He shows some passing touch, although he doesn't always fall through on his passes, and he's able to see basic reads that are out in front of him. Kickouts when his drive is shut off, short rollers when he's blitzed, bounce passes to cutters. It's just that he's not doing these things consistently. He's in the 24th percentile of the league when passing out of pick and rolls when the defense commits. Now there's a big difference between I'm cut off so I'm gonna get rid of this and I'm anticipating being cut off to set you up. And within that difference lies offensive fluidity and flow. Edwards seems to be embracing the challenge of improving in this area and Minnesota is clearly prioritizing his on the job training by ramping up his facilitating possessions. Part of this is the result of logging more minutes, but he's nearly doubled his pick and roll reps per game, even with the return of Carl Anthony Towns. Now that narrow view of the game and intermittent focus shows up on defense too. Looking at his physical tools on paper, you'd think that Edwards would be an all out terror on the defensive end, but he's left a lot to be desired. Again, like on offense, when he's directly involved in a play, Anthony competes. This one sequence against the Bucks is a good example. On ball, he battles Chris Middleton one-on-one -on -one here. Doesn't let him get deep, forces him to face up, and really contests this first shot. Next play, again, similar look, and Ant actually blocks this. But finally, Middleton checks out, and Edwards has Bryn Forbes. Different type of player, different type of actions. Anthony zones out for a second and Forbes pops open for an easy look. Sometimes it's a simple lack of effort. After the missed shot here, there are a solid two seconds where Ant could sprint to get back to check Devin Booker, whom he can see is heading towards an easy one in transition, and he just doesn't. Edwards says all the right things. Defense is effort. Like, if you give effort, then you got great defense. And I do think that he's improved some in this sense, but I would like to see Ant become offended by these types of plays. Expectations are always loftier if you're the number one pick, and there are nights where Ant leaves you feeling giddy, but there are also nights where he leaves you feeling shitty. With that in mind, I have to give Anthony Edwards a B- on his rookie report. You have to balance those tantalizing instances with reality. 
It's right down the middle. I think you'd be in your right mind to be optimistic or pessimistic. What if Edwards remains a half-hearted defender who insists on scoring inefficiently at a high volume and stays a good distance away from being an intuitive creator? You can't be all three of those things at the same time and contribute to serious winning basketball, at least not as a primary option. For optimism, on the flip side, consider this. Edwards went full-time with basketball as a sophomore in high school. This is the first time in his hoops life that he's been really challenged to develop these broader problem-solving skills. Every context prior to this one enabled him to stay largely what he was. Most every hooper in the world would die to have the Ant-Man's advantages and tools. For him to reach his potential, it's going to come down to self-awareness interfacing with that otherworldly confidence of his. If he manages to do that, this league is in big trouble. Let me know if you agree.